Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What does it mean to be a slave and to be free? Because we can be fooled into thinking that we are free when we are actually in full bondage, sin, and ignorant of the reality in and of itself. Our text in Romans starts at verse 19, but I will go a little bit further back this evening to, verses, to verse 12 and then up through 23 of chapter 6. We're going to explore righteousness and slavery. Mama. And in verse 12 it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. These passions in our mortal bodies are all around us. They're constantly present with us. All forms of media use beauty to call attention to their product. Advertisers and our neighbors know what it is that gets our attention. Wear this scent. Drink this beer and get all the girls. Wear these clothes or this lack of clothing to get all the gods. Eat this obscenely large burger and have your appetite satisfied. Choose my program and become rich beyond your wildest dreams. It is clear, especially this time of year, that we are all about seeing and being seen. What passes for clothing today, I would argue that only a few decades ago wouldn't even have qualified as underwear. And we are great rationalizers. While everyone else is doing it, our divorce rate is down, not be, is, is actually kind of plateaued. But it's not really down, it's not really down. It's, the fact is more people are cohabitating and less people are getting married. Well, if I don't take it, someone else will get it. I better get my hands on it. Well, why bother doing what you are supposed to do? You know, the nice guy always finishes last. Why bother? You're already in trouble. You may as well have fun until you have to have pay the piper. Thoughts like these bring us to verse 15 of that chapter where it says, what then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. May it not be to be free of righteousness is to be a slave to sin. Listen again to verses 20, 21, and 23. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? Bye-bye. The end of those things is death. Bye-bye. The wages of sin is death. The issue is not whether or not you have a master. The issue is which master do you serve? Your actions speak louder than anything you have to say. Let not those around you say, I cannot hear the gospel of which you speak because of the noise of the hypocrisy and deceitfulness and selfishness of your activities. This is spiritual warfare, warfare plain and simple. We are, there are principalities and powers at work in this world that we can't even fully fathom. The actions we take or don't take either fall for one side or the other. Listen again to verse 13 where it says, Do not present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life 
and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. The word instrument in this text can, and in this context, can very easily mean weapon. You use weapons in warfare. So the members of your body are either used as weapons for righteousness or unrighteousness. There is no Swiss neutral ground in this battle. There are no lukewarm fence-sitting positions available. All of your actions either strike a blow for righteousness or they strike a blow for unrighteousness. The question is, which side do your actions fall on? Whose soldier are you? Or should they ask, whose slave are you? In verse 16 it says, Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness? Now we'll get back to that statement in just a moment. Obedience, which leads to righteousness. It's a key turning phrase in the text. But first, I would like you to ponder the motives of the things that you do. Why do you do whatever it is that you do in your life? We know why we do sinful things because we are seeking to serve ourselves. But why do you do good things? Why do you do righteous things? Well, if you are a slave to righteousness, then you do them in response to a loving God who redeemed you. But if we do things, righteous things, to get recognition, in order to feel good, to get salvation for ourselves, then those things, those good and righteous things, become self-serving. And by coming self-serving, serving ourselves, we are sinning. When we do anything for ourselves, not God, then our motivation is a little bit off. The beautiful thing is, if you do it for the right reasons, many times you still get to have the recognition. You still get to feel good oftentimes. But even if you don't feel good, because you have salvation, His Sacrifice on the cross cleanses your activities and makes, takes out every little piece of wrong motive and makes that service pleasing to God. Look at what it says in the last part of verse 19. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. Sanctification, a big theological word that means the process of becoming holy. First, in God's sight, we are holy because of Christ. Then, in cooperation with the Holy Spirit, in response to the gift of salvation, our spiritual well-being can and will grow healthier. It can and will grow holier. So getting back to obedience which leads to righteousness, you may ask, how can I do anything? that would make me righteous. It is not possible. Nothing that you do can make you righteous. The obedience first that this speaks of is the obedience that led Christ to the cross so that He could purchase righteousness from us, for us. So when the text says obedience which leads to righteousness, it does lead to righteousness because it was purchased and attributed to us. So it leads to righteousness also because as we realize this great gift, it leads us to righteousness and obedience, acknowledging our sinful nature, which leads to contrition, which gives the Holy Spirit fertile ground to work faith and forgiveness, and gives the forgiveness that makes you righteous. <clears throat> And that's why these truths from today's text apply to you. Take a moment now to receive 
the blessings of these words in today's text. What God says in verse 14. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. In verse 17. Thanks be to God that you, who were once slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. Fast forward to verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and it's in eternal life. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. These words are speaking of you. Carry this truth in your heart, knowing that God is pleased with you because of Christ and what He did on the cross. Through this truth, no matter how bleak things may seem, you have and possess and have access to the peace which surpasses all human understanding and can and will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting, a gift from God, paid for by Christ and sealed in your baptism. In Jesus' name, amen.